I want to start by telling you a story. And that is that I have a little girl, she's five, and her name is Lydia. And she is a fireball, man. Like she feels things hard. So when she's happy, she's ecstatic. And when she's mad, she is ticked. And she's going to let you know. And something that's been really interesting with her personality is she's very stubborn. And she, we discovered early on when she would kick and when she would write and when she would do different things with her body, we discovered that she was left-handed. She would do things on the left side. So my husband, who has a background with baseball, when he started coaching my son T-ball and Lydia wanted to try, he would say, okay, Lydia, you're a lefty. So let's make sure you bat on the left. And she would refuse. She would, she didn't want to bat on the left because her older brother, Sam, who's just a year and a half older, he batted on the right. And so she refused. No, I don't want to. And she'd look and she'd say, is this the way Sam bats? And we'd say, no, because Sam's right-handed, but you're left-handed. And so you'll hit the ball a lot better if you do it on your left. And that upset her. Um, and just recently she has decided that she's going to bat on the left. Right. And when we say, okay, you know, right with your left hand, she's not so offended by it as she used to be. And she's okay with it because she's realized that yes, she does actually hit the ball more often. If she bats on the left, her handwriting is better if she uses her left hand. And it's something I love about her. I love that she's less left-handed and that she's the only left-handed one in our family. It's really special. And I was thinking about Lydia as I was thinking about this theme, becoming Zion, as I like to think of it, becoming one in heart and mind. And I thought about how for us to really become Zion, I think it's so important that we know for ourselves that we belong here, that we belong in Zion. And sometimes I think it's really easy to have something about us that's different, that makes us think that we don't belong in Zion. And so for Lydia, she didn't, she wanted to be like everyone else, right? She wanted to be right handed. She wanted to look like everyone else when she hit the baseball. But what's so important is that we belong to ourselves, that we're okay with our differences, and we take that into Zion. I had some struggles with this. I grew up with, in a family with some severe mental illness. And so I was very excited when I left my home as an adult. And as I, dated my husband and later married him to have a life where we would not be touched by the effects of poor mental health. And so when I began to struggle when I was 21 years old and I had my first panic attack, I felt like my life was over because I didn't feel like I belonged. I wasn't the kind of person, the kind of member of Zion that I had always hoped I would be, which is far away from anything that had to do with mental health and mental illness. And so I didn't belong. That's how I saw I wasn't what I thought that I was supposed to look like in the future. It's interesting, though. I think that Satan's greatest tool is that he wants us to think we don't belong. And even further, he wants us to think we're alone. I had a therapist that once she asked me as I was struggling through these feelings of self-acceptance and not wanting to be this person who struggled with depression and anxiety. She said to me, she's also a member of the church, and she said, Julie, how did the pioneers do it? How did they travel across the plains, bury children and spouses and family members on the side of the road and keep moving on during such terrible weather and exhaustion? How did they do it? I just looked at her and she said, they did it together. That's how they did it. They did it together. And we talked about how so many of the things that are disrupting our life right now, whether it be anxiety, depression, addictions, your orientation, whatever it is, Satan will always want to use that to make you feel like you're alone and that you don't belong in Zion. And I think he does that because he knows and he's seen time and time again that when the saints get together, they're unstoppable. They are unstoppable. They create Zion. But he's going to do whatever he can to create isolation. Because he's like, if I can just get them apart from each other and not together, then they're on their own. They're alone. They don't, they don't feed off each other in positive ways. I can get them to believe crazy things in their head like, you're alone. You don't belong. I love Brene Brown. She, her, man, her little book, The Gifts of Imperfection, really changed my life when I had to do a lot of work learning to, to belong to myself. And she has this beautiful definition of belonging that I want to read to you. It says, True belonging is the spiritual practice 
of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. And I don't know, I heard someone quote Brene Brown. I think it was in the spoken word before conference. So I think I could quote her in a fireside now, right? I think she is so inspired. And I love that definition of belonging. And I guess the question that I think about with this is how do we ever belong in Zion if we can't really ever let people see us for who we authentically are? Those words, I see you, are something that have, that I've become very attached to in my life. I have a bracelet on right now that says, I see you. And there's a story behind that, of course, because that's the title of my podcast and my book. I think it's so important that if we want to be able to see the people around us positively, if we want to be able to witness their lives and have compassion on them. We have to let other people see us in Zion for who we are, not who we think we need to be to belong. I mean, how do you really feel like you belong somewhere if you feel like people don't really know you? There's this line, and I just saw Dear Evan Hansen, the movie version this week. I've seen it on Broadway as well, and I love it. I deeply love that soundtrack. But there's a line in one of the songs where he says, Um, What if everyone saw, what if everyone knew, would they like what they saw or would they hate it too? And I think that's what it means to belong, to be truly seen and loved. And that's where I believe Zion happens is when we can do that with each other. And I don't mean this as an excuse for bad behavior, like, well, you know, my greatest weakness, maybe it's that I'm angry. I'm an angry person, so everyone needs to see it. That's not what I mean. I don't mean to use this as an excuse rather than maybe motivation to be the best versions of ourselves everywhere we are, whether it's with people or whether it's alone with our kids or alone in our home with no one at all. I believe the best version of ourselves that's keeping covenants. That's the kind of work that is. That's keeping your baptismal covenant to mourn with those that mourn, to be a part of this Zion. My sister, there's this story where, a true story, she has six kids now, but she had five kids at the time. And she was walking by a mirror. She had, you know, one of her kids was a baby at the time. She had the baby on the hip and she saw something brown in her hair. I'm just going to let that sink in for a second while you think about what that might be. And she was like, no way. And she gets up close and she's like, oh my gosh, like nothing this bad has ever happened in her life. She calls a neighbor down the street and she's like, I don't even know how to say this. But there is poop in my hair right now. There's poop in my hair. And she's like half laughing, half crying. She's like, can you just come here? I don't know even know what to do right now. And so the friend comes over and she grabs the baby for my sister. My sister's like, Wah! and she goes into the bathroom and she gets in the shower, like not even know, like, where do you start when you have feces in your hair, right? Something I hope I never experience. <laughs> but I see her in this. I see her. That would be a terrible thing. And I feel empathy for that. Anyways, and she came out later and her, fr- her and her friend were able to kind of laugh about it. And this friend knew well enough not to laugh right when she got there, right? To let her get cleaned up and like overcome the shock of it before she teased her about it. But I like to think of this as I think that's how we should be for each other in the world and within the church that we should be able to be that comfortable with each other. That if you had poop in your hair, you'd call me up and be like, I, I don't know how this happened, but I got baby poop in my hair. Like I need you here right now. That's the kind of authenticity I think would be really great in Zion, that we could call each other in those vulnerable moments, even like that. And I believe that when we can be that authentic with ourselves, when we can let others see us like that, even in our worst moments, we then have that energy to give to other people, to give to others and to see them in return, because we know that we belong here. We know that we belong in Zion exactly as we are, whether we have questions or insecurities, maybe we don't fit the mold we thought we would. We belong here. We are God's people. We are Zion. We chose to come to earth. So that means that everybody on this earth, including celebrities, including the person down the street that we don't like, including someone who seems like they have it all together, maybe we're even jealous of, including the guy that flipped me the bird the other day because sometimes I'm a bad driver. We're all a part of this human family and we all belong. So I think we can start treating each other like it. 
I really believe as I read about the city of Enoch and Enoch, who was the prophet then, that's where I really focused my time as I prepared for this talk because they're described as being like Zion, as having one heart and one mind. And what I really noticed about them is that what is the same about them? I'm sure they looked different. I'm sure they had different abilities, different skills, just like we all do. But what was the same is that the Savior was at their center always. I believe that's how we become Zion. Zion is one heart and one mind. So our hearts and our minds centered on the Savior. We don't need to have the same hair color, the same skin color, the same orientation, the same. We don't all need to be right-handed, right? It's okay to be left-handed. In fact, it makes Zion better to be left-handed. We just need to be able to see each other and sit with that and be comfortable with that difference. That's what Zion means to me. And that's what I strive for in my work, in my daily life, in my own home, is to become that kind of Zion because I need it. I need you. I need to be able to be me around you and feel loved and accepted. There's probably one of my favorite scriptures, maybe my favorite now, is in Matthew 20, 34. It says, so Jesus had compassion on them and, <laughs> and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. I love this scripture so much because that's what ICU means to me is that we allow the deepest form of ICU is we allow the Savior to touch our eyes and to change the way we see not just others, but ourselves, that we see him the way he sees us, um, at least as close to his sight as possible in this mortal journey. And I really feel like if we can do that, man, like we will create Zion because Zion isn't just going to happen. We are going to create it. And I want the Savior to come and I want to be ready for him to come. And I want to be one heart and one mind with you. And I just want to take this opportunity because I have it to bear my testimony that I don't know a lot of things. But something I do know is through personal experience, through personal revelation, is that the Savior loves us and he loves you. And that things will be okay in the end, that he has a plan for each of us. There was a time when I was struggling a little bit as a speaker, as an author, just trying to find my place. And I went to the temple and I was sitting in the celestial room and I had this really strong impression come over me. And it was, Julie, you're amazing. Like you are incredible. You are so, so important and just on fire. I adore you. Those are the feelings I had. And then it's like there was a dot after. And then the, the immediate impression came, and so is everyone else. And that's Zion. It's not playing small. It's not hiding in insecurities. It's being the best version of ourselves and recognizing that everybody has that in them. I bear testimony of that, that Zion. It's achievable. And there are people that want it so badly. And I hope that you're one of them. And I'm going to continue to try to be one of them. I love our Savior. And I know that he's real. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.